I definitely think the record is kind of a soul-searching record in a lot of ways. I, I, I uh, like I said, I feel like there's a lot of conflict in it, kind of questioning, you know, some of some of the bigger questions of life. Um, I wouldn't really call it a spiritual record um, as much as I'd call it kind of a like a soul searching record and kind of feeling like I needed to yeah wipe everything clean and kind of start from new and be okay with not knowing the answers to everything. As far as like fame, I feel, the only really weird thing is when you go home. I feel like yeah. like neighbors that used to like not really don't know who you were or something come up and like want your autograph. It's like really weird. It's like, you used to like babysit me. You want me to sign something. Like, this is really weird. Let's both acknowledge how weird this is right now. Um, that, that's really the only time that it's, it's strange for me. My great aunt keeps on asking me for autographs. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's like great somebody aunt. that I haven't seen in, uh, in a long time. This? No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, it's really, everything that has happened to the band has been so incredible. Yeah. You can't complain. You really can't. It's more like, you can just laugh about some things. You can laugh about Great Ant asking for your autograph, mm -hmm. but you'll sign it nonetheless, you know. Yeah, I actually, uh, last time we were doing promo, I signed a few extra of the 8x10s, and you guys went through and signed them also, and then I just took them off of the top, took Did them you? home, so I have a drawer of pre-signed things to pass dog. out. That's I trick you guys into doing promo for you me. Sly it's dog. not much to ask. <laughs> Honestly, that's a real conversation that I had with myself going into this record is, because it's such a personal record for me, lyrically, there definitely was insecurities of feeling like, all right, these aren't typically the like coolest things to talk about, and especially in, on such a broad s scheme. But I also feel a responsibility as an artist to be honest about how I feel and to express that. And I think there's a lot of people who maybe hide those kind of things because, I mean, no, nobody walks up to someone and you're like, hey, nice to meet you, I'm depressed, you know? It's like. <laughs> Like, but it's a real thing a lot of people deal with, and it's something I've dealt with for years, and I'm still a human being who functions and, and uh, you know, is learning to, to cope with those things. And so it's an honest part of me, and so then it ends up being an honest part of the band. And so I feel a responsibility to say that rather than, you know, try to write a song about something that just is meaningless to me. Like, you know, like, I mean, I'm sure it's meaningful to other artists, so I'm not knocking other artists, but I never write a song that's like, I want to go to the club and get drunk and giant dance around. Dun, 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 dun. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let's record that. <laughs> yeah. it's really good. But I mean, you know what I mean? That's, that's not real for me. It may be real for other people. But, but I, you know, we just write about things that we're passionate about and some people resonate with and some people they'll hate it. And it's just part of, you know, it's part of being an artist. And as long as it's honest for you and you can own it, then that's all that matters. I bet my life was the, one of the funner songs to produce, but it was also the hardest to, to produce. That, the song started with a simple acoustic gu guitar I sent to Dan, and he wrote the entire song based on this simple guitar. And it was like, okay, we have an acoustic guitar, we have a voice, now what do we do? So we went through probably seven or eight different reincarnations um, until we finally ended up, uh, you know, what if we were able to get a gospel choir to come in? So we talked to our manager, and he was able to to uh, get an awesome choir, the Las Vegas Gospel Choir, um, to come in the next day <coughs> by some miracle. <laughs> and we sampled them and, and just kind of had them do different things, had them riff, and just kind of just say, just do your thing for like a couple hours. And we just took all of these different samples that they had done, chopped them up and stuck them in where it seemed to make sense. So that was a challenging but, but fun process. Drink lots of water. Yeah. Deodorant for everybody. Yeah. Buy two deodorants in case another guy in the band doesn't have deodorant. Yeah, and whenever conflict starts to come up, just have a discussion about it right then. Don't wait until there's some explosion or something. We are like the least drama-filled band ever, and I think that's because we're all so comfortable with each other, and we just, if somebody does something that pisses the other one of the other ones off, you know, we'll just talk yeah. it out. We can't, we are never the band that goes on stage angry. It just cannot happen. We will stand on the side of stage and talk about something <laughs> before we walk on because we'll have a terrible show otherwise, you know? We always get to a point where we all, we all just, I think we've been through quite a bit for a band that only has put out two albums. We've been together for seven years. We've been robbed together, we've been to jail together, we've been broke together, we've been, uh, you know, we've had success together. 
I don't know. I just feel like we've been through a lot, and we all just respect each other, and except when we don't, and then you know, and then we just fight it out. Yeah. <laughs>